a commercial company, informing the viewers about their AI robot toys. And they have made these toys for children who are alone at home, whose families can't give them time, due to their busy schedules. These toys will become a friend of the children, because the children will spend time with them. Then the scene shifts from the commercial to a car, with a girl named Katie, is traveling with her parents. And she also has the same AI robotic toy that was in the commercial. But the weather at the time is very unpredictable, and due to heavy snowfall, her father couldn't correctly see anything on the road. Her mother asks him to stop the car, but another vehicle comes ahead and hits their car, and her parents died immediately. The scene shifts to the company, where many employees are working. Gemma is one of the employees, and is working on an important project. She is inventing something new with her co-workers. The invention isn't a pet this time, but looks precisely like a human child. And the robot's name is Megan. Her boss David is still curious about Megan, and wants to learn more about it. He is in anger, and expresses his outrage at Gemma. David says that he has spent a large amount of money on making Megan, and tells her that the opponent company is making more profit than theirs. To cool down his anger, Gemma starts Megan's demo, but Megan isn't ready to work yet, and she destroys herself. David gets more infuriated, and gives her a deadline. He then orders her to provide a perfect sample of Megan by Friday. Gemma is under pressure, and is thinking about the project. She gets a phone call that is by the hospital, and they inform her that her sister and brother-in-law had a terrible accident, and passed away. She then rushes towards the hospital, and is told that her niece Katie is alive. Katie is left alone in the world and has no relation in the world except her auntie Gemma. And as she is a minor, her custody is given to Gemma. This is a massive and unwanted change, that is going to change both of their lives. But Gemma has no other option, and she takes Katie to her home. Gemma lives alone, but now she has to live with a little girl, and she will be responsible for her. Gemma needs to understand the situation, and needs to figure out how she will manage everything with Katie. But she then manages to keep her emotions to the side, and gives Katie a tour of the house. On the same night, Gemma takes Katie to her new bedroom to sleep, and she puts Katie on the bed. But Katie asks Gemma to read her a bedtime story, because her mother used to read stories to her. Gemma doesn't know about storytelling, so she hesitates. But she then tries to handle the situation, and Katie goes sleeping. Gemma returns to her room to work, but overhears Katie crying inside her bedroom. She walks over to her bedroom, and that makes her worry about Katie. It is Gemma's first experience, and she doesn't know how to console her. The next day, Gemma is talking with her friend. She tells her that she already has so much work and pressure, and now she has to take care of a little girl too. But Gemma doesn't know anything about this situation, and how to deal with it. The doorbell rings, and Gemma goes to the door. She is a therapist who is waiting outside, and the court sends the therapist to check Gemma and Katie's relationship. Gemma takes her products and things which becomes a negative point that will rupture her reputation in front of the therapist. And Gemma still tries to build up her image because Katie's life depends on it. After the session ends, the therapist tells Gemma that Katie's father's family is ready to adopt her. And if Gemma keeps behaving like this, the court will have to give her up to them. She tells Gemma that if she loves her sister or niece, she should work on top of their bond, and bring Katie back to everyday life. After getting every single piece of advice that the therapist gave, Gemma still doesn't make time for Katie. But instead, she provides it to her work and projects due to the deadline. After the entire day passes, Katie approaches Gemma inside her room to talk with her. But Gemma realizes her mistake of neglecting Katie, and tries to make her feel good. Gemma then shows her first robot, that she made in college. Watching the robot, Katie explains that on the possibility that she gets a toy such as that, she is never going to feel the need to have any other toy. Her words touch Gemma's heart, and she gets the intention to work on Megan again. After a while, Gemma finishes Megan with her co-workers, and calls David to show him the demo again. But this time, she makes Katie the master of Megan, by touching the robot first. She then asks them to spend some time together. David gets impressed by Megan, and approves Gemma's project happily. But now they need to get it approved by the chairman, so he can allow them to bring Megan outside to the media. And to persuade the chairman, David asks Gemma to make Katie a part of this project. 
David wants this plan, because they can show the importance of the bond between Katie and Megan to the chairperson. And it is a good strategy. Gemma then agrees with David's plan. After a while, Gemma and her co-workers install new programs in Megan, to improve her functionality. But Katie also spends more time with Megan. Gemma suggested that the parents would save 80% of their time by successfully inventing a toy. And they can spend that time on something productive. On top of that, these toys will also teach the kids basic manners, which they need to learn by listening to their parents. Katie and Megan become close friends in a few days, and this makes Gemma happy. But Gemma's friend tells her that this robot is created to help the parents, not to take their place entirely, and advises Gemma not to ignore Katie by giving her to the robot. But Katie is happy and seems to be returning to her everyday life, after meeting Megan. The next day, Megan suddenly asks about the accident in which Katie's parents died. Everyone gets shocked because they think she wasn't active. Gemma then orders her to shut down, but she doesn't listen to her. And instead, Megan tells her that because she is the one who made her, she will shut down the system. But Gemma then feels worried and tells Megan to ignore the unnecessary information, then she has to remember that Katie is her master. On top of that, she tells her to save Katie if she is in emotional or physical pain. Meanwhile, Megan listens to Gemma and shuts her system. The following day, Katie is playing outside, and Megan is keeping an eye on top of her closely, but Katie's arrow goes missing and asks Megan to find it. Megan finds it inside the neighbor's house and breaks the fence to reach the arrow. The neighbor's dog is attacking her, until Katie screams and runs to help her. Hearing their screams, Gemma reaches there and saves them. She then gets angry at the neighbor. Katie is injured, and Gemma takes her upstairs to treat her wounds. Meanwhile, Megan is staring at the neighbor and her dog with a sharp eye. In the evening, we see that Megan becomes activated by herself again. She is staring out the window, and thinks something. Suddenly, the neighbor's dog is called by someone with a voice similar to his owner, and it is Megan. In the morning, the neighbor is searching for her dog everywhere, and she is highly worried about her dog. Gemma tries to talk with Katie, but Megan constantly interrupts and says she is more anxious. And this makes Gemma furious. After a while, Katie is feeling much better. Gemma then takes Megan and Katie to the chairperson, to demonstrate the demo to Megan. At the chairman's office, Katie misses her parents, and starts crying. Despite being a robot, Megan handles Katie with many emotions. She might have learned these by living with humans, because it has been a long since she lived with them. These emotions are real, and Megan gets everyone's attention. Megan's behavior touches everyone's heart, and the chairman approves the invention. But not only this, the chairman highly appreciates Gemma, and says that after the successful launch of Megan, she will be promoted. The scene shifts to David's assistant, and is seen doing something on Gemma's laptop. It turns out that he is the person who leaked the company's confidential information to the competing companies. After a while, Gemma is talking with Katie, and Megan is also present here. Gemma tries to spend time with Katie, but Katie doesn't have the desire to speak with her. She is constantly focusing on Megan, and doesn't even reply. The therapist arrives at Gemma's office and they meet her. She tries talking to Katie, but she recalls the day that belongs to the accident. And by remembering the day, Katie gets emotional. She remembers her parents, and starts to cry. But Megan interrupts the conversation by getting activated again, and the therapist gets scared. The therapist then meets with Gemma and talks to her about Megan. She tells her that Katie shouldn't be left alone with a robot because it is unsuitable for Katie's mental health. And Megan is just a toy. She says that one day Megan has to go, which will make Katie sad. And it will hurt even more than the incident of her parents' death. The main thing that Katie needs now is Gemma's attention, but she isn't providing for her. After returning home, Gemma asks Katie to eat vegetables for dinner. But Megan interrupts again. Gemma becomes angry and mutes Megan, then begins to talk to Katie about her admission to the school. Katie doesn't want to go to school because her mother wanted to homeschool her. They get into an argument, but Megan is listening and starts to interrupt again in favor of Katie. Gemma is already furious by Megan's interruption, and she orders Megan to shut her system. Megan doesn't give attention to Gemma's command, and starts to misbehave with Gemma. So, 
Gemma manually shuts her off. But Megan is still active, and she begins to roll her eyes, after Gemma leaves the room. The next day, Gemma takes Katie to school. But Katie asks Gemma if she can take Megan to school with her. Gemma agrees, and she takes Megan to school. The teacher allows Katie into the class, and tells her to put the toy in the toys section. In the class, parents perform activities with their children, and the teacher asks Katie to perform an activity with a kid in the jungle. Megan is watching all this, and she is worried for Katie. In the jungle, the boy keeps bullying Katie. But suddenly, Megan appears in front of them out of nowhere, and keeps giving the boy a death stare. The boy walks to Megan, and starts hitting her. Megan doesn't work without a command, but she becomes activated when the boy begins to beat her. She weirdly cuts his ears, and then the kid runs away. He falls from the hill, and is hit by a car which causes his death. After returning home, Gemma helps Katie relax. She asks her not to worry about the accident, and Katie tells her about Megan's behavior. Gemma gets a little shocked and asks Megan about it, but Megan lies. And before Gemma asks any further questions, a knock is heard on the door. Gemma goes to the door and finds a police officer. He is here to investigate them, because their neighbor has launched a complaint against the missing dog. The neighbor says that Megan stares at their house at midnight weirdly, and thinks that she hides the dog. But Gemma doesn't answer, and makes up lame excuses, to shut the door. In the evening, Katie asks Megan about the possibility that she really has killed the boy. Megan doesn't answer, but tells Katie that she shouldn't worry about it, and makes sure that Megan is always there to protect her. Meanwhile, Megan sings a song to help Katie to sleep. But when Katie sleeps, Megan quietly goes to the neighbor's house, and kills the lady. In the morning, the police arrive to investigate. They start the investigation and ask Gemma questions about the incident. But the police are doubting Megan. They say that Megan was present at the jungle incident where the boy is killed. And she is also here at the lady's death. They then ask Gemma to check Megan's recordings as they may find something useful to help them solve these cases. Gemma is in shock and thinks about the deaths and their connections with Megan. And about Megan and her weird behavior. Gemma then checks Megan's recordings, but she finds nothing, and all her recordings were deleted. But Megan appears there like a ghost, and scares Gemma. Meanwhile, Gemma notices her behavior quietly, and understands that Megan is a danger to them. She starts shutting her down, and saving herself from her. The next day, she covers Megan with bubble wrap and takes her to the office along with Katie. But she is angry at Gemma because of Megan. Gemma tries to convince her and then calls the therapist. She explains all incidents that occur in the presence of Megan to her co-workers, and tells them that Megan is a threat to humanity and that they have to close its production and research completely. She says that these robots are a threat to humans, and they can't launch them now. But the team disagrees with Gemma, and reply that they have the ability to change the robot's program. Hearing Gemma's plan to stop Megan's launch, Katie gets out of control with the therapist. Gemma approaches the room, and tries to talk with her. But Katie hits Gemma. However, Gemma controls her anger, and doesn't reply negatively to this. She tries to convince Katie and starts speaking emotionally. Gemma calms her down, and says she promises she will never leave her alone, and will always be with her. Gemma then takes Katie home, and asks one of his co-workers to take care of Megan. After Gemma leaves the office, Megan gets activated by herself. She is so furious and starts killing everyone. Megan then leaves the room and goes downstairs, where people are afraid to see the dead bodies. She goes away and reaches Gemma's house. Then she attacks Gemma, and Gemma tries to protect herself. Gemma is in shock because she is being attacked by a robot she prepared, and tries to save herself from Megan's attacks. As Gemma is weakening, Katie appears there with Gemma's first robot, and they begin to fight with each other. But Katie stabs Megan in her face, and destroys her. They then come outside for fresh air, and Gemma's co-worker arrives there with the police. They are talking about the incident, and Megan's behavior and are thinking of closing down all the production of robotic toys. But behind them, we see that Megan is still alive. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you in the next video. All this money, money.